guys, welcome to Civil Medicines. And in this lecture, I'm going to overview the female reproductive systems. And I would highly recommend you guys watch the previous video regarding this female reproductive system before watching this video, because this is going to be the overview, okay? So, so what are we gonna talk about is, remember, whenever we talk about this, you know, the reproductive systems of female and when when we when we're talking about the physiology of it we always have to talk about from the the hypothalamus right from right here this is the hypothalamus right here and this pituitary and what is this ovary and then uterus axis okay because we have to talk about in each location what is happening okay so that's what we have to know so this is going to be the overview so what we're going to do is that we're going to briefly talk about what is happening in each of those area and then and we're gonna draw the okay menstrual cycle all right that's what we're gonna do so so guys you guys know that right from the hypothalamus right here especially from the arachoid nucleus they have the cell bodies for you know synthesizing this hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone so this gonadotropin releasing hormone can come okay through this hypothalamic hypophysial, okay, blood vessels, and what is going to happen? They're going to go and stimulate the cells. You see these blue cells? These are called gonadotrope cells, okay? And these gonadotrope cells will release this hormones, which are called follicular stimulating hormone, and also another is called LH, or also called luteinizing hormone, okay? So this FSH and LH, they're going to come and work in the ovary. Remember, guys, ovary is the, the primary sex organ for female because they're going to, they have a endocrine functions, which they're gonna produce certain hormones, but at the same time, they also do, you know, they're gonna produce ova, right? What is that called? What is that process? That process called, look, oogony, like oogony, right? So oogenesis, that's what is gonna happen in the ovary as well, right? So, so when these guys come here, right? Look at this. These are different types of cells that you're gonna see in the ovary, but remember, the ovary has a two parts. It has an inner medulla and it has a cortex, which is called peripheral cortex. And these cells, okay, are located in the peripheral cortex, okay? So, and what are these cells? We'll talk about that too, okay? So, but at the same time, I also have to quickly mention, but remember this, the oogonia, okay? This is coming from primordial germs, germ cells, okay? These are germ cells. So these are, these are arriving from the, uh, uh, from the yolk sac, Okay, in the intrauterine life. And what is gonna happen? They are going to, you know, do the process of mitosis. And even the mitosis, which is a growth that happens during the intrauterine life, okay? And they'll convert into primary oocytes, okay? And this primary oocyte, what is gonna happen? This process will go to the process of meiosis. But remember, this meiosis, they'll go to, go to the process of meiosis, but this primary oocytes would not complete its cycle. It, it will get arrested actually in this in this phase which is called prophase one okay and especially in the the phase it's called diplotin stage of a prophase one that's where this guys will get arrested this primary oocytes will get arrested and when the female when they hit the puberty this primary oocytes will completely cycle and then it will become what it will become secondary oocytes plus the polar body all right the smaller cells and this secondary oocyte should also start the process of meiosis, but it would not complete, but it will start, it should get arrested at the metaphase two, okay? And it would not, you know, complete this, uh, this cycle, the meiosis two cycle, if the fertilization does not occur, okay? And guys, you need to remember this. Oftentimes, they're gonna ask you these questions, okay? So if the fertilization does not occur, then, what is going to happen is that this after the puberty, this prime or uh, the secondary oocyte that will get arrested at the metaphase number two. Okay, that's what you have to remember. Now, this is process. What is this process? We're talking about this process is called oogenesis because at the end we're trying to get what ovum or ova, right? That's what we're trying to get. Now, what is going to happen here? Look, if I if you see this structure right here, okay, look at that. This structure I do as you can think about it as a this is a oocyte right here, okay? And this oocyte is what covered by this flattened cells, okay? 
these flattened cells, and these flattened cells are called granulosa cells, okay? Remember, the reason why they call this follicles is, follicles basically means, okay, you have a one, like, let me write it down here, okay? You have this one cavity right here, and this cavity is lined by cells, okay? So if, the, if there's a cavity, and the cavity is lined by the epithelium cells, we call that follicles, okay? And this process right here, okay? This process, this is this is gonna be my primordial follicles, which get converted into primary follicles, then after that, it'll become secondary follicles. This process is called follicular genesis, okay? So remember, this primordial follicles, okay? What is gonna happen? There are cells nearby, okay? These cells are called stromal cells, and these stromal cells, you know, it's, they're like a, you know, like a growth factor. They act like a growth factors, okay? And what is gonna happen is that, you know, those nutrients that is supplied by the stromal cells, okay, influences by those, these primordial cells will get, you know, proliferate and get converted into prime, this primary follicles. Remember, your FSH does not act on your primordial follicles, okay? It acts on the primary follicles, okay? Again, let me repeat this. This FSH does not act on this primordial follicles. Instead, it acts on this primary follicles, okay? And remember, this primary follicles, when under the influence of the FSH, okay, this, this epithelium, okay, this, uh, this granulosa start multiplying, start getting, getting proliferated. At the same time, this oocyte will start, okay, secreting non-cellular like a glycoprotein. And that glycoprotein, you, you see this one? This is called Jonah pellucida, okay? And they're going to start making this line of this epithelium, multiple layers of this granulosa cells, okay? And what is going to happen? Then after that, not only that, nearby, there, there are going to be cell nearby, okay, this connective tissue. They also start arranging like, like this. And this arrangement of these cells, okay, that is covering the granulosa cells, these cells are called theca cells, okay. And remember, theca cells has their two types of cells, theca interna and theca externa. Theca interna is highly, highly vascular. And LH, look at this LH. This LH has the receptors at the theca interna, okay? And this FHS has a receptors in your granulosa cells, all right? So, so now what is gonna happen is that, you know, under the influence of this FSH, okay, that's gonna work on the granulosa cells, okay? And what is gonna happen is you know, they're gonna start making estrogens, okay? That's what it's gonna make. Because what is gonna, because remember, what is gonna happen is that this, this granulosa cells has a receptors, sorry, it has a, obviously it has a receptor for FSH, but the, at the same time, it has an enzyme, which is called aromatase enzyme, which makes, you know, basically, which converts the male hormones or male androgens into female hormone, which is a estrogen, right? That's what this guy's the granulosa cells. So basically, what is the granulosa cells secrete under the influence of this FSH? Look, estrogen right here. Okay, they're going to start making a lot of this estrogen. Not only that, they also make this hormone called anti mullerian hormones. They also make activin, okay? This anti mullerian hormones, it act as an ovarian reservoir. What does that mean? Which basically means is that this is, you know, this basically means is that this, this ovarian reserve, reservoir, which basically means that, you know, it is, it, it is used for a clinical marker to, you know, to, to, to estimate the remaining oocytes that present in ovary, you know, to calculate or to determine the age of menopause, okay? Now, in this, this anterior mullerian hormone, it also, what it also does is that it suppresses the recruitment for the other, these primordial follicles. So that way, you know, a lot of this, you know, these follicles are not converting and becoming like, you know, getting more mature and converting into gra graphene follicles, okay? So this suppresses the, you know, the follicular genesis process. You can think of that. Not only this, when this estrogen is going up, what is going to happen? It is going to go high up. It's going to go to the plasma, right? And then it's going to, ultimately, it's going to go to the hypothalamus, right? And then anterior pituitary. And it is going to suppress the release of this FSH hormone. Okay, that's what it's going to do. So when it suppresses the release of FSH, this FSH would not continue, okay, supplying the, the cells, the, the cells, you know, this, the cells will then, after the word is going to happen, the cells which has, which still need FSH to grow, 
when there's a deficiency of the FSH, these guys would not grow. So this follicular cells will die, okay? And whenever this follicular cell, follicles, the primary follicles or immature follicles, when they die, we call that a, look at this, follicular atresia, okay? And these are genetically programmed death of the cells, okay? So that is how only few numbers of those, let's say, these primary follicles would get converted into secondary follicles and graphene follicles, okay? So now, then, then what's going to happen is that, then after that, you know, around, let's say, if the hormone cycle is like, let's say, we, if we average out and we say the hormone cycle is 28 days, usually, you know, around like 12 or 13 days, what is going to happen is that, you know, because the cells are continuously producing estrogens, and what is going to happen is that the very, very increased level of estrogen, you know, suddenly it becomes a positive feedback and suddenly you start seeing a high level of rise on your FSH, but at the same time, you know, you see a very, very high increased level of LH hormone, okay? And that is what we call them LH surge, that's what you see, okay? And the under the influence of LH surge, okay, what is going to happen is that this LH surge, okay, what is going to happen? These will cause you know, the blood vessel coming down here, it will cause the dilations of blood vessel. It started making that. And, the, and then also, this guy, the secondary follicles, okay, will get converted into like what, graphene follicles, okay. And then basically what is going to happen here is that, remember, these cells, you see, this all cells, right? The granulosa cells, right? And there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be cavity will form in between these granulosa cells, okay. And there's going to be a lot of fluid there is going to be there, okay? And that fluid, whenever there's a dilation of blood vessels, okay, a lot of fluid is going to come down there, okay? And what is going to happen ultimately is that, you know, these guys are going to get a little bigger and bigger, okay? And the enzymes nearby, what is going to happen? These guys are started, you know, producing this proteolytic enzymes, okay? Like collagenesis enzymes. And what is going to happen ultimately is that, okay, these guys will get ruptured, all right? And remember, this guy right here, look at this. This is your oocytes, and there is going to be a zona pellucida. And this is, you see that, this cells right here, this is called, it is kind of making a crown on top of this oocyte. That's why we call them a corner radiator. And look at this cells right here. Look, this is attaching, you know, the granulosa like cells with the other granulosa cells. Okay, and we call this portion, it's called cumulus oophorus. Okay, if you want to remember that. But anyways, and as this goes bigger and bigger, okay, what is going to happen? Because of the proteolytic enzymes, okay, this will get ruptured. And when you get ruptured, what will come out? Look at this, what will come out? This guy will come out. And this, it will come out, the oocyte will come out, and then it will, and then Juna pellucida, and then the granulosa, the, these granulosa cells will make a layers on top of that. And this is why it's called corner radiata, okay? And then after what is going to happen is that once this come out, there is going to be these other cells, they'll come together and get collapsed, okay? And that collapse cells, okay, that is what's known as called coprous luteum. Look at this, coprous luteum. Coprous basically means, what is coprous means? It means a body. Luteum means a, basically means it's a yellow. The reason why they call this yellow is because, again, under the influence of LH, okay, what is going to happen here is that, you know, these guys will started, you know, secreting one of those of fat globules and all, okay? So because of that, if you histologically look at it, they appear to be in yellowish color, okay? So that is why we call them a coprous luteum, or you can also call them a yellow body, okay? So this, and this coprous luteum, or this yellow body, it is the, okay? It is the temporary endocrine gland for female, okay? It is a temporary, because this coprous luteum is the one that is gonna produce progesterone, okay? And remember, the progesterone, these guys will keep producing progesterone for about like 10 to 12 days, okay? After that, they will degenerate. They will degenerate, okay? After 10 or 12 days, they d does not require any sort of like the signals, okay? They'll continue producing that. But after like a 12, 10 or 12, 10 to 12 days, they need to get signals from a hormone, okay, to continue producing the progesterone, okay? And that hormone is called what? It's called human chorionic gonadotropin, okay? You need to, because fertilization has to occur, and, you know, this human chorionic gonadotropin, okay, from the placenta, that has to report to this, okay, report to this corpus luteum, telling this corpus luteum to keep producing progesterone, okay? And after like 10 or 12 days, if this corpus luteum does not receive, okay, signals from the human 
Koya ne gonadotrophs, these guys will start degenerating. All right, that's something you have to remember now. All right, now after this, okay, we have to talk about, okay, we have to talk about in this menstrual cycle what is happening, okay, when it comes to the hormone levels and also when it comes about this, you know, this endometrium. Look at this uterus, right? You guys know this. This is a uterus, right? And the uterus has a different layers, right? Uterus has a most outside layer, we call them a perimetrium. The middleest layer, which has a lot of smooth muscle cells, that's what this oxytocin hormone works there for the perturbations, okay? And also this, this inner layer, which is called endometrium. And remember guys, endometrium has a two layers, right? We call them a, okay, we call them a, one of the layer, we call them, you see this one? We call that as, what do you call that? You guys remember, this is called stratum, right? This part is called stratum basalis, right? We call them stratum basalis. And then other layer, this part is called stratum functionalis, okay? Remember, this stratum basalis is the one that gives rise to stratum functionalis. And even this stratum functionalis has a further divisions. Most the apical layer, we call them a stratum, okay, compacta. And then the middleest layer below that, okay, below the stratum compacta, we call them a stratum spongiosum, okay? If you guys cannot remember, that's okay. But remember that it's the stratum basalis that is going to give rise to the stratum functionalis, okay? And not only that, these endometrium, okay, they also produce a lot of this uterine gland, all right? That's very important. And we also have to talk about this neck regions, okay? This neck area has this very, very highly sphincter muscles, okay? And that is called cervix. Okay, and this is very important because cervix is always producing what? They're producing mucus, right?